How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a copy button using HTML, CSS and some JavaScript. All right, so it's going to look something like this. We have a copy button underneath this text. If I press on copy, it's going to, of course, copy this text right here. I can say control V and there we go. So it's actually really straightforward to create something like this. And we're going to be starting in this tab right here because I'm going to assume that you have some some existing text on your web page which needs to have a copy button added to it okay the HTML currently looks like this here I've got the div with the existing content and I've got some CSS styles just to make that content look nice for the video. Of course, it is completely irrelevant to the copy button solution. And I've got an empty JavaScript file. So let's build the copy button. We need to go back inside here and I'm gonna be leaving this linked down below. It is an icon library website called Ion Icons. It's gonna give us that copy icon, okay? This one right here. If you do a search for copy, you can see it is right there once you choose the outline uh, category here, okay? So in order to get these icons to work on your web page, you wanna go to the usage section and then simply copy these two script tags and paste them at the end of your body tag. Back inside here, let's, pa uh, let's place those two divs and we're done with the installation of that icon library. So we can begin on getting that button on the page. Let's hop down underneath the paragraph div. All right. We'll say button of type button. Okay. With a class of copy. All right. This here is going to be the copy button, of course. And going inside here, we're going to have the icon and the label next to it, which says copy. If you go back on the Iron Icons website, and once you've searched for copy here, you can simply press on the code down below. It's going to copy that, and you can pa uh, you can paste it inside your web uh, sorry inside your HTML, okay? And also give this a class of copy dash icon. If I was to save this and go back inside the browser here and refresh, we get something like this, a button with an icon inside of it. Back inside here now, let's add a new span with a class of copy dash label with some text of simply just copy. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. Okay, before moving forward to the CSS, I want to add another attribute to the button element. We're going to say data dash copy is equal to then say uh, book dash description. Now, of course, going back to this paragraph here, this paragraph describes a book. So I've given it a class of book description right up here. It's a unique identifier for this particular div. Okay. I've also provided that book description class to data dash copy down below. This here is important because basically this attribute tells us which element this copy button is responsible for. If I click on this button, which content do I want to be copied? Well, it's going to be whatever's inside data dash copy. I've given that, uh, sorry, I've, I've given this a value of dot book description because of course this here is a class and classes begin with a dot of course okay and that is what that's doing we're gonna look more into that very shortly in the javascript but for now i'm gonna keep that inside there okay going inside the css now we can begin on styling up the button to make it look nice we're gonna target the class of copy and firstly, give it a background of 009578. That is the decode, uh, sorry, the decode green color, as well as a foreground color of simply just white and a border radius of six pixels, a display of flex and an align items of center. These two here are going to ensure that both the icon and the text are vertically aligned as well as a padding of eight pixels top and bottom, 12 pixels left and right, a gap of eight pixels between the icon and the text, a border of none, an outline of none, and a cursor of pointer. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here, okay? 
looking pretty good so far, but now let's add an active state. When the user clicks on the button, let's change the background color. Copy colon active. We're gonna say background of 006F59. That is a darker green of the above green, okay? I'll save this back in the browser, refresh, click on the button, and we get that background applied right there, okay? Then lastly, as you may have seen inside the demo, if you press on the button, it's gonna have that gray background and it's gonna be disabled and so on. That is the disabled state of the button. So let's, let's add that disabled state in. Let's go back in the index.html and let's make the button disabled just for now so we can see what the CSS looks like. We're gonna be changing this later on using JavaScript, but for now, let's add it in there go back inside the CSS and we're gonna say copy, then disabled, so colon disabled, and we'll say a background. A background of F1, 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 and a color of dark gray, as well as the cursor of not allowed, okay? Save this back in the browser. Because we have that disabled attribute on the button, this CSS state applies, and we get that dark background, sorry, that, that gray background, that different text color, and of course, that not allowed cursor across the button right there, okay? Fantastic, going back inside here now, let's remove that disabled attribute, and we can now move on to, of course, the JavaScript, all right? So as for the JavaScript, we need to firstly target every single copy button on the page because you might have multiple copy buttons. To do this, we can say document.query selector all and pass in the selector for a class of copy. Now, for each copy button, what are we gonna do? Well, we can say copy button like this. So for each copy button, we're gonna say copy button.add event listener. When a copy button gets clicked on, we're gonna run this function, okay? In order to copy the text, we need to know which text do we need to actually copy, all right? As we spoke about before, we have this data-copy attribute, so let's use this to resolve this div here. Back in here, we can say const target element is equal to copy button dot data set dot copy, all right? Let's console log target element. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on the button, and we get dot book description. Dot data set dot copy just means get me the data attribute, so data set, okay, then dot copy. Whatever comes after data dash, that's represented by your data set, then dot copy just means look, okay, the last part here, copy, right? So we have that value. Now we can simply say document dot query selector, okay, just like this, query selector, pass in that value, save this back in the browser, and now the target element is of course that div. We have the target element, let's now get the actual text to copy. We'll say const text to copy is equal to target element dot text content dot text content is gonna give us the actual text inside the element. Save this, I'll just, I'll just log out the text to copy here. Save it, go back in the browser, click on the button, and we get this here. As you can see, it is the text for the element. But there's a problem. All the tabs that I've got in my code is present, right? This stuff here, that's present inside the string. So let's use some regular expressions to remove some of that uh, white space, okay? So going back inside here now, I'll put this back to the way it was. I'm back inside here, we're gonna say text to copy is text content, then just say dot replace, and let's replace the white space instances, so backslash S plus, then G to get all of them, replace them with a space character, so now, all of your, uh, all of your uh, white space, so your tabs and so on, is gonna be replaced here, okay? Giving us a nice clean string. Let's use dot trim just for good measure uh, for the edges, right? Now I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on here, and we get a much 
cleaner string to work with. And now we have this text, we can simply copy it to the clipboard. How do we do that? Very easy. We just say navigator.clipboard.writeText and pass in there the text to copy. This here is a promise, so we can say dot then and react to when the copy operation is complete. For now, let's say alert copied just like this. I'll save it back in the browser, refresh, click on the button and we get copied right there. Okay, if I now say control V, we get the copied text, that's working. Okay, the last thing to do now is going to be to have that extra state where it goes disabled and you can't press it again to give that feedback to the user. Okay, to do that, I'm going to go back inside here, inside the copy operation complete function. So once it's completed, we're going to get a reference to the label. In other words, this span right here. Okay, so we'll say const label is equal to then target the copy button dot query selector, then say uh, dot copy dash label right here. Then we're going to say const original text is equal to label dot text content. Okay. Original text is almost always just going to be, well, it's always going to be the text inside here. In other words, copy, right? So original text is copy because we need to change that text to then say copied. Okay. Back in here, right? copied, yeah? So we need to get a reference to whatever's in there originally. So you could hard code this to be copy, but let's make it more robust by saying label.text content. Then we're going to say, uh, we're going to say copy button dot disabled is equal to true. So disable that button, then say label.text content is now equal to copied with the exclamation mark. I'll save this back in the browser, refresh, click on the button and we get copied right there. Okay, the button is also disabled. Fantastic, right? But now after a second, we're going to want to put it back to normal. Back in here, we can say set timeout. All right, I'm going to run this function after one second or 1000 milliseconds. This function is going to say copy button dot disabled is now equal to false. It is no longer disabled. And also the label dot text content is back to the original text. Save this back in the browser, refresh, click here. After a second, goes back to the original state. So that is how to build your own copy button using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to Decode. And here is another video.